بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته So today إن شاء الله تعالى we are covering the name of Allah الحق الحق linguistically it has a few meanings it means the truth uh, as opposed to الباطل which is falsehood that's one meaning but also the word حق by itself can mean a right and like for example I have a right to do this or you have a rights you have certain legal rights etc like the plural would be حقوق حقوق are uh, people's rights uh, so the word haq itself can mean a right. Uh, and it can also mean a purpose or a reason. Uh, for example, Allah Ta'ala says, خَلَقَ اللَّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ بِالْحَقِّ That Allah Ta'ala has created the heavens and the earth with a purpose, بِالْحَقِّ That's one interpretation, that there's a reason, there's a purpose for all this creation. Actually, another interpretation that I find quite beautiful, when Allah says that He created the heavens and the earth uh, in truth, one implication is that the heavens and the earth are created with coherence, like things make sense. Like there is such thing as right and wrong, truth and falsehood. Uh, and uh, it's just such a fascinating thing to think about. I know a lot of people don't think about this, but you know, one of the smartest people they say who ever lived, uh, allegedly, Allah Alam, is Einstein, right? And Einstein has a very famous quote where he says, um, the most incomprehensible thing about the universe is that it's comprehensible. And I find that such a beautiful quote. He's just talking about how it's amazing that this whole creation that we live inside of has this property or this quality of the ability to discover the truth behind it. Like you can learn about it. There's consistency, there's coherence. And so it could be the case that Allah Ta'ala is saying, Bil haq, that, yani, this whole universe has been created in a comprehensive way, in a way where truth actually stands out and you can, you can learn, you can progress, and things can become clarified for you. Uh, anyway, that's sort of a bit of a tangent. Point being is that Allah Ta'ala is al haq, uh, which implies what? That Allah Ta'ala is the ultimate reality, the ultimate truth behind everything. What is behind it? You could say, oh, I see this creation. Okay, well, what's sustaining? What's maintaining? What is the ultimate truth behind all this? What is keeping this all going? If you point to another created thing or another material thing, then you could say, well, that thing has an explanation. What's the explanation of the explanation? What is maintaining it? Why doesn't it fail to exist, et cetera, et cetera. And that, and if you back it up with another uh, material explanation, then you're just taking it one step further. And so cont continuously you have to ask, what is this, what is behind it all? And so ultimately there is something that is behind all of this. Uh, we believe that this is uh, what would be called a necessary existence uh, or wajib al-wujud uh, wajib in Arabic. Uh, now in terms of the name of Allah, al-Haq, uh, Allah Ta'ala uh, is mentioned as al-Haq uh, ten times in the Qur'an. Uh, twice next to the name al-Malik, al-Malik al -Malik al -Haq, the, 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 he's al-Malik, he's the king. And why is this the case? Because there's lots of people who think they're kings, right? There's lots of people, some people, they are, they think I'm the king of this household. Some people think I'm the king of this company. I'm the king of this country. There's lots of people that have this concept of authority and this feeling that they are in charge. And Allah Ta'ala describes himself as Malik and Haq together, uh, <coughs> emphasizing what point? That nobody's really, truly the king other than Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. Nobody truly has authority uh, and power and dominion like Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala in the truest uh, sense of the word. Uh, furthermore, another uh, time you find that the two names of Allah come together is Al-Haq Al-Mubin. Al-Haq meaning Allah Ta'ala is the ultimate truth and reality, and Al-Mubin means the thing that is, uh, the one that is clear, but also the one that clarifies. And this is uh, very beautiful because the truth is obvious and it clarifies doubts, whereas falsehood is illogical. So it seems so fitting that they go together. Why? Because when you have a, tr you know, uh, the truth is clear in and of itself and it clarifies other facts uh, around it, or you know, you could say peripheral matters. That's the nature of truth. And so, al haq al mubin, these two go so beautifully together. So, we have to ask ourselves are we tired of being lied to? Uh, are we tired of false information? Are we tired of, of living in a world uh, that uh, is just overrun by nonsense information, whether you go online, whether you turn on the television, whether you read uh, magazines, newspapers, whatever the case is, there's so much information out there, some of which is true, much of which is falsehood, and we need to remember that Allah Ta'ala says what? لَقَدْ جَاءَتْ رُسُولُ رَبِّنَا بالحق, That certainly the messengers of our Lord had come with the truth. That ultimately, truth is from Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. Truth is uh, coming from the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that's something that we need to stick to the Quran and the Sunnah and furthermore subhanAllah this Quran is such that not only is it the truth but it cannot be approached by falsehood and so as a result of that 
the more you bring this Quran into your life, the more you memorize it, the more you apply it, the more you live by it, you will find that falsehood has a harder and harder time penetrating and, and affecting you. Allah Ta'ala describes this Quran by saying, لا يأتيه البعطل من بين يديه ولا من خلفه تنزيل من حكيم حميد That falsehood cannot approach it. Falsehood cannot approach this Quran from before it or from behind it. Uh, it is a revelation from a Lord who is wise and or is a revelation from the all wise and the all praiseworthy. So subhanAllah, this is a very, very beautiful ayah describing what? That this Quran cannot be approached by falsehood. So therefore by implication, if I can bring this Quran into my life, then I will be uh, effectively protecting myself from falsehood attacking me, whether it be from the front, from the back, whatever the case is, from all directions, inshallah ta'ala, I am protected. Now, what are some of the effects that this name of Allah, Al-Haq, should have on our lives? Number one, we should be more honest. That seems to be the most obvious, that you want to be an honest person. The more honest you are in your life, then the closer you are going to be to your Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is Al-Haq, the ultimate truth, uh, the ultimate reality. Number two is that we should trust in Allah Ta'ala's promises. Trust that Allah Ta'ala is telling the truth when Allah says that the believers will go to paradise and that ultimate victory goes to the believers, that this deen is going to keep spreading that Allah Ta'ala promises all sorts of reward for various deeds. Uh, we should believe that promise and strive to be better and better, inshallah Ta'ala. Number three, we should uh, uh, be very cautious to give every single person their due rights. Because again, the word haq can imply a right, huquq, your rights. And so uh, along these lines, the Prophet uh, uh, said what? Inna li rabbika alayka haqqa, that your Lord has certain rights on you, that Allah Ta'ala has certain rights on you. Wa li nafsika alayka haqqa, and your body has certain rights to eat healthy, to sleep on time, to you know, take care of yourself. Your body has certain rights on you. Uh, and your family has certain rights on you. You have to work, you have to provide for your family, you have to spend time with your wife and kids, etc. So when it comes to spirituality, when it comes to self-care, when it comes to family time, the Prophet is emphasizing that everybody has certain rights that you need to fulfill. That uh, therefore, uh, uh, Anybody who has rights, you should give them their due rights. So this is a this is in a uh, lengthier hadith, which the Prophet uh, actually uh, I'm pretty sure that the Prophet didn't say these words. Rather, the Prophet uh, heard these words later on and then confirmed them. So they kind of still have the status of hadith if the Prophet affirmed it. But either way, uh, this is still uh, valid, something that we need to apply in Shah Ta'ala. Furthermore, uh, we should uh, have humility to the truth. This is a very very important factor to be humbled by the truth. Uh, when you're corrected in life, don't let arrogance cause you to reject the truth when it's apparent. This is a, a very big issue. Sometimes you have a certain position and you feel very, that this is a very, this is something that you hold very near and dear to your heart. You're very confident about this truth, but then you find out that, oh, guess what? It wasn't correct. Do you have the ability to abandon it and say, you know what? I may have been fond of it. I may have been confident about it. I may have thought it's true, but at the end of the day, the truth is more important than my ego or holding on to this, uh, let's say, antiquated idea. I need to learn to drop it and just follow the truth wherever it will lead me. We have to humble ourselves to the truth because all truth is ultimately from Allah because Allah is al-haq ultimately. So yes, uh, two people that will never learn are those who are too proud to humble themselves uh, to the learning process. You know, some people, I'm not going to go into that class with like younger people and, and learn from the basics. You know, many people never learn any Arabic. Why? Because they can't admit to themselves that they don't even know alif bata. Right? And so they never want to put themselves at the level of other kids. And so therefore they go their whole life, they live and they eventually die. And it's like on Yom Qiyam, if you're asked, why didn't you ever get close to this book of Allah? Well, I didn't want to admit that I was at a low level. So this pride. SubhanAllah, you have to confront the truth and say, you know what? It's okay if I start at the beginning. And the second person who would never uh, learn are those who are too shy. Aisha Al-Anha, she said something very beautiful. She said, Ni'man nisa'u, uh, uh, nisa'u al-ansar. Lam yakun uh, yamna'uhunna al-haya'u that how good are the women of the Ansar, their shyness does not prevent them from learning this religion. So subhanAllah, of course, it's a beautiful quality when women, our sisters, have haya. We should all have haya. We should all be people of modesty, bashfulness, shyness, etc. But at the end of the day, subhanAllah, if you need to learn the truth about your deen, if you need to learn fiqh, then you can't say to yourself, oh, I'm going to ignore the truth and because I'm too shy. No, sometimes you have to just drop that and ask uh, even awkward questions. Furthermore, how often, ask yourself this question, when you disagree with somebody, and let's say you're confident that their position is wrong, how often during the discussion are you able to even concede some points? I'm not saying you have to agree with everything they're saying, but even when somebody's wrong, usually there's some percentage of what they're saying that makes some sense, right? You could say, look, maybe I don't agree with the main point or the main idea, but I, I see where you're coming from. How often do you say, hmm, that's a good point? Not, not conceding the whole idea, but at least they've made one good point. Do you ever do that? Do you ever concede? Do you ever say, hmm, I haven't thought about it that way? 
Uh, have you ever said things like, hmm, I, I see what you're saying, I see where you're going with this, I understand your perspective. Do you say things like, let me think about that, or that's a very interesting perspective? Now, I'm not saying that you have to agree with everything every time you're in an argument. No, sometimes the person may be blatantly wrong, but it's super important, it's very healthy to try to find something that they're saying that is true and say, you know what, I will humble myself to those little bits of truth to create some sort of commonality and to let them know that I'm not putting up these walls, I'm not stubbornly trying to fight them. No, I can concede to the truth when I hear it, but I'm not gonna agree with everything you're saying, some of which you're saying is wrong, but I'll, I'll definitely agree with the parts that are right. This is such a healthy attitude and unfortunately, I have seen at times people who, they won't give up an inch. There are some people who, it doesn't matter what you have a discussion with, they will, no, 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 anything you say. You could say, okay, well, I mean, the sky is blue. Well, no, not always, you know, it <laughs> doesn't matter what you say. They will just, uh, you know, they, they just want to disagree with anything. And subhanAllah, this is, when you get into that defensive mode and that combative mode, maybe take a deep breath and realize, hey, this is not a healthy way to conduct a discussion. And so, yes, another thing is that Allah Ta'ala warns us from doing two things that are not blatantly lying. One of them is telling half-truths you say some of it but not the whole picture and sometimes it's lying by omission sometimes you tell half the story and then just stay quiet for the other half Allah Ta'ala says what? وَلَا تَلْبِسُوا الْحَقْ بِالْبَاطِلِ وَتَكْتُمُوا الْحَقْ وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Allah says do not mix truth with falsehood that's number one that is what telling half truths you're mixing it you're twisting it and number two is what? وَتَكْتُمُوا الْحَقْ وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ or that you that you conceal some of the truth that you what lie by omission because sometimes you could tell the truth but you're only telling half the story Right? So whether it be telling half-truths, whether it be mixing it with falsehood, whether it be lying by omission, these are all things that are uh, blatantly wrong. And the final point that I want to mention today, inshallah ta'ala, is what? That the truth must be delivered in, with certain conditions in mind. If you want to speak the truth, if you want to convey the truth, and the most important truth is what? The truth that Allah is one, the truth that Allah ta'ala has sent messengers, guidance, and the truth that we are all going to die and be raised on judgment day. This is the type of truth we want to be conveying with the people around us, inshallah ta'ala, reminding people to turn back to their deen, to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it has to be done with certain conditions. What conditions are they? They are, first of all, who is this message coming from? Is it somebody who is respectable that has good character? So you want to make sure that you, prior to delivering the message, have a good reputation. Number two, when is it done? When do you deliver the truth? In a time where a person can be most receptive. You don't want to do it where? In front of a big crowd to embarrass them, to make them look bad, or when they're in a rush, or whatever the case is. If they're busy, if they have a lot of things on their minds, you have to pick the right time in a wise way. And of course, how? How do you want to do it? You don't want to convey the truth in a way that you get to flex your muscles and show, see how smart I am, see how much I know, see how I can defeat people in an argument. I am so awesome. Look. When that is the goal, it seems it becomes quite obvious. You can see when people are, uh, you know, mentioning facts or, or or conducting an argument because of the sport. They enjoy the, the the challenge of it. They want to come out on top. They want to look tough. This is unhealthy if you want to convey the truth of Islam. What you want to do actually is you want to speak in a way that is sincere. And the more sincere you are, the more people can feel that you're actually trying to convey something for their benefit. This is the objective, inshallah ta'ala, not to defeat them. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who can convey the truth to uplift people, not to tear people down, to educate people, and not to quote unquote school them or uh, 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 you know uh, wreck them, destroy them, whatever terms you want to use. May Allah ta'ala make us of those who always turn to the truth and have humility for the truth. May Allah Ta'ala make us of those who are safeguarded from falsehood. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. And may Allah Ta'ala make us of those who always fulfill Allah's rights, our own rights, rights of our families, friends, etc., our community, and so forth. Jazamdar khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.